Good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, Seishu Simhadri. I work for uh, Global Computer Enterprises. We are uh, based in Washington, D.C. Uh, we provide uh, cloud services uh, uh, in the area of uh, big data, financial management, procurement management. So we recently um, launched uh, a government system, ussspending.gov. We migrated from an um, in-house system to the cloud. So I'm going to share with you how we did that and what is the need and uh, some of the decisions we have taken uh, when we moved this to the cloud. So I'll not go into the details of uh, Lucene Solar, but some, uh, some high-level uh, architectural decisions uh, that are taken and whatever uh, um, decision was at the end of the uh, tests and multiple performance tests and functional requirements. So I'll go over them. Okay. So <laughs> this uh, system is uh, uh, called ESSpending.gov. It's a, a public uh, website anybody can access. So it mainly uh, gives a lot of information about uh, how the government is uh, spending uh, our tax dollars. Uh, there are different departments, agencies in the federal government, and they spend money on uh, different types of, uh, uh, for different purposes, either the contracts, grants, loans, social security payments. Um, so they, they do that either on, and they, all the data is collected uh, by the system either in real time or in batch mode. So there's a different sources of data coming into the system. And the users can go into the system and look at the data. So it's, uh, the system is very heavy on um, statistics, uh, aggregation queries, not just uh, doing the free text search of uh, looking at any spending. It's more on uh, statistics. So just look at the numbers, uh, what we're dealing with. Uh, U.S. government sp nearly spends about uh, 2.1 trillion uh, per year. Uh, just compare that with uh, the revenue of some of the largest uh, corporations. Of course, uh, the other corporations' numbers, they are revenues. And the number which we are talking about for the U.S. government is more of a, uh, spending. So we get this uh, data across uh, different um, uh, departments and agencies. And we provide different statistics on that uh, data. So just to give you an overview of uh, how the money is spent, uh, it can be some contracts uh, that are given to commercial organizations. Uh, so anybody uh, who is doing business for uh, federal government, uh, they'll be giving contracts and they'll be doing the work. And the grants are for uh, um, academic uh, institutions or some, again, some commercial institutions for any, doing any research, any uh, uh, new work. And the direct payments are uh, the social security payments. You can just see the numbers uh, that are spent uh, every year. And there are uh, loans and insurance payments uh, that are uh, uh, paid by the federal government. So what can uh, users do on the site? Uh, there are um, the mainly analytics. Uh, look at how the government is uh, spending on uh, which department is spending how much money and which vendors are getting uh, uh, top dollars and the top number of contracts and what locations in uh, the states or in the, in the world are getting what money, where the work is being performed. So you can get all the stats on uh, how the money is uh, spent. Um, and then uh, the free text search, uh, if you are looking for a specific uh, vendor's numbers or a specific contract grant, if you know, um, you can go search. And the auto uh, suggest feature also available. Uh, Those again, using Solar, we'll talk about that. And then um, some of the, uh, organizations, uh, some media who wants to look at uh, uh, the data themselves and mix with any uh, uh, their own data, they can request uh, the data feeds. So they can come to the site and uh, either they can uh, download complete data set or selectively say that I need the data for this uh, vendor or this for department and then um, uh, download the data. Now also the system has a lot of uh, web services um, that are available for uh, uh, external systems if they want to integrate and get some information in real time and then show it in their system, either on mobile device or um, in, their, uh, in their own application, they can do that uh, by using the APIs. So the general, uh, the universe of uh, users uh, using system are public like us. So it's uh, open to everybody from anywhere. So you can go look at the site and interact with the site. And then the media, uh, when they, whenever they're doing any investigation or uh, uh, publishing an article and they want some information about uh, uh, any contract or grant, they go to the site and get the information. And uh, Congress uh, also uh, gets a lot of information from this uh, site. There are a lot of uh, goals uh, that are need to be met by departments. 
for example, uh, there's a small business dashboard uh, where they say, I mean, like, okay, we have to spend this much amount of money per year uh, for small businesses. Okay, did we meet that goal or not? Uh, so there's a small business dashboard that is also available um, for Congress to look at and the departments to track their uh, small business spending every year. And then value-added resellers, uh, they are the, uh, any commercial organization, uh, they are going to use our APIs, uh, get the data extracts to get the data and then um, combine with uh, some other data they may have and provide some more value-added <laughs> services. So that, that is about what the uh, requirement is, what the functionality is. So it was uh, previously hosted uh, in a government uh, data center in a, based on a commercial uh, database solution. So uh, our customer uh, approached us to move this to a, um, a cloud-based solution, uh, mainly to uh, save costs and also have a scalable solution because the data is continuously increasing. I mean, so as you, go, as you use the system more and more, every month, every year, we're going to get more data. There's more spending, more types of spending we're going to, go, going to collect. So the system should be scalable enough to uh, take care of this increasing uh, data and users without uh, impact any performance. <laughs> so that's the primary goal, um, to save money and uh, to keep the scalability aspect in, uh, without losing it. So uh, we um, my, uh, migrated that to our uh, Big Data Cloud. We have Big Data Cloud, which is uh, based on Hadoop Solar uh, uh, combination for, uh, uh, based on the need. So the usual uh, suspects, uh, we have the Hadoop and Solar. Uh, we are using Solar for uh, analytics and uh, free text search. And we have the Hadoop for um, indexing the data from multiple sources. And also when our uh, users request any uh, data feeds, so the data, the files are also generated using the MapReduce jobs uh, in parallel to get the data uh, quickly out. And then uh, Drupal um, is not usual for the static content and a lot of visualization uh, widgets uh, that act on the data coming from uh, Solar. Okay. So now we have the solution. Um, you need to come up with uh, high-level architecture. Okay, how, uh, how is the data distributed? Should we use uh, shards? And uh, okay, what is the configuration of each shard should be? How much uh, uh, size should I allocate for each shard? Um, so how much, uh, uh, how many resources? How much resources uh, do I need to allocate for each shard? Okay, do I need to use, uh, allocate the two CPUs? Uh, how much uh, RAM I need to put in? And uh, what is the disk space required? So how do you decide uh, uh, what's your uh, the shard optimal shard size to be? In, in our case, uh, for this system, there are a lot of uh, index types because there are different uh, types of spending. Each one has its own index type, and they are for different sizes. And um, some of them are uh, large uh, uh, indexes, some are small. So what uh, we, we have done is, uh, so what's our objective when we um, hook up to this uh, the website or the system? Uh, what, what is our objective? That we every solar query that comes, uh, it should be solved within a few milliseconds. We said uh, under 50 milliseconds, we need to get the response back, regardless of uh, the size of the data that's increasing. So let's say if I need the 50 milliseconds for each query or 100 milliseconds for each query, well, how should I? How much uh, uh, should be the shard size? So that defines how many shards you're going to break into the complete data, the, the break the complete data set. So we started with that and then uh, did multiple tests and come up with uh, some uh, number where we need uh, uh, to stop and this, okay, we need a uh, million documents, so we're going to put a million documents in one shard. That's going to give us uh, um, the desired uh, response time. And then you also see like, okay, now we have multiple shards. Okay, should we have a single solar instance uh, with multiple cores or uh, multiple solar instances with a single core? That's again one more decision to be made. Um, obviously, with uh, single solar, single instance um, with multiple cores, uh, you, you need uh, higher uh, he heap size because you're going, to have, uh, you're going to handle multiple shards. But with mul single solar instance, because you're going to add one um, um, shard at a time, you require less uh, uh, heap size. So generally, with our experience, uh, we know that uh, when you're dealing with a JVM, uh, less the heap size the better the performance of uh, uh, the JVM um, managing the memory. And then, so once we say that, okay, what is the optimal size of each uh, node, 
uh, how should be the cluster uh, design? I mean, uh, with a solar uh, cluster, every shard is uh, equal. That means you can go to any uh, solar instance. Uh, they'll give you the result uh, collecting from the other uh, solar instance, other solar shards, give you the results back. But should we do that? Should we treat them all uh, equal? Or should we say that there are, uh, I'm going to assign some nodes as the nodes uh, which will be collecting the data from other data nodes, and then some data nodes will be just giving you a subset of the data. The advantage with that is I, I can uh, break the data into, uh, let's say I have 50 million documents. I'm going to div uh, divide into 50 shards. Each shard uh, is responsible for a million documents. And that way, because it's only one million documents, I can give very uh, as much minimal as possible for the heap size, maybe three gig or two gig, uh, whichever is uh, based on the number of fields we have. Uh, but then there should be one or more nodes that are responsible for collecting the data from all these shards and then uh, aggregate the results and then give it back to the client. So obviously those nodes will be requiring uh, more uh, heap size. So what we have done is uh, we divided into two categories. Uh, the uh, nodes which require uh, larger heap size, which are responsible for collecting the data from multiple nodes, and the nodes just serving the data, uh, so that you have two categories of some nodes we are giving a high uh, heap size, about uh, 20 gig uh, heap size, and some nodes we are giving only uh, uh, two, 2 gig or 3 gig. That way you can more optimize uh, the usage of memory and uh, the resources. And then all the requests will be sent to the aggregator nodes, and aggregator nodes are uh, um, collecting the data from all the data shards and giving the results, the complete, complete set of results back to uh, the, uh, the, the caller. So after multiple tests, uh, what we have chosen is uh, to use a separate uh, solar instances, each with single core, and um, also depending on the, um, uh, the server configuration, we use multiple hard drives to increase the I.O. Uh, for indexing time and also reading time, uh, reading from uh, uh, index into memory. So we used uh, as many hard drives. We have like um, some servers with the 10 hard drives, with some four hard drives, depending on the configuration. Uh, and then also we have the the data size we are talking about in this case is mostly structured data. So we, one copy of uh, the complete data set is about 250 gig. So we keep it like three, four uh, uh, replicas. So we could effort to use the solid state disk to even further improve the performance of the read time and write times. So we went with the solid state disk, uh, which uh, we saw about 15%, uh, 20% uh, the performance improvement when indexing the data. And then another uh, piece is once you start having more uh, shards, there's a lot of communication between uh, uh, the servers for uh, collecting the data and then uh, again, uh, uh, aggregating the data in one place. So it's very important that uh, you have a faster uh, interconnect between uh, the servers. So we went with InfiniBand uh, all between all the servers. That increases uh, this uh, QDR, which gives you a 40 Gbps uh, uh, transfer time, uh, transfer speed between uh, the servers. So we went with InfiniBand uh, that interconnects all the servers. So we have an uh, optimal, I would say, uh, layer of uh, um, hardware at the network layer, the sync, um, and then the hard disk layer, and then uh, the memory distribution across servers, um, depending on the nodes. Okay. So there's a um, facet component, uh, the stats component inside uh, solar, that uh, lets you facet uh, numbers uh, by a single field. So there is very useful and powerful, uh, um, I would say, stats component uh, for analytics. It gives you uh, some max, average, um, numbers up by a given field, uh, but it does only uh, by one single field. So you cannot do it by uh, multiple fields. So one of the requirements for our system is to uh, do the faceting by more than one field, because in multiple cases, we'll be showing numbers. Uh, OK, in this uh, department under this agency, these are the numbers. Or maybe in this department uh, under, under this uh, state, this is the money spent. So we uh, uh, heavily needed that functionality to um, facet uh, by more than uh, uh, one field. So we enhance the solar functionality to uh, perform that uh, out, uh, and then it's basically it's an enhancement done to the solar. So in the process of again uh, committing back that to the solar project. And, 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 and it works across uh, shards. Uh, the, uh, the pivot functionality which you uh, currently see that in the four and then back quarter to three I think. 
um, I think did not originally work for um, the distributed charts. Okay. So when uh, when you have the shard uh, collecting the data, so we all know that there's multiple data importers uh, inside uh, Solar. So one of the data importers is uh, um, we have very powerful. Um, uh, data importer that collects the data from multiple uh, um, SQL based uh, data sources. Um, so give a SQL, either it's a full uh, initial index or the delta index, you can uh, take it up with that, with that data importer. But the problem with that is uh, you have to specify uh, in each SQL what data range you're going to um, um, uh, index in that chart. So if they have 100 charts, the SQL for uh, all the 100 shards is going to be different, and as you have more and more uh, shards, it becomes uh, uh, nightmare to maintain this uh, uh, SQLs inside each of these indices, and then you have multiple replicas of each uh, uh, node. So what we have uh, done is uh, have an external uh, data importer uh, that is based on the MapReduce, uh, which collects the data from SQL or other data sources, and then uh, creates based on hash key, it will uh, distribute across multiple nodes. Uh, you, you see that functionality now is in uh, Solar Cloud. Maybe it's, it's not a big problem when you uh, migrate to Solar Cloud because Solar Cloud will uh, take care of distributing the data across uh, nodes without you worrying about um, uh, ranges uh, on, uh, on the single uh, on a single uh, Solar Shard. So that, that's about uh, the application layer, how we designed the Solar Cluster and how we uh, sized each node and cluster. Now. Uh, coming to uh, the hardware, um, because we are the cloud service providers, we are responsible for both uh, the software and hardware and maintenance, and also make sure that it's very uh, cost effective. Um, so it's also important that we have a cost effective hardware uh, that's designed for uh, running our cluster. So we looked at uh, multiple options uh, to host it on a um, small uh, commodity server, say like uh, eight core server, 12 core server, star 16 core. Generally, when we talk about big data, or Hadoop, uh, Solar, people uh, suggest to go with uh, commodity servers like uh, 12 core, 16 cores. So we compared um, using those 12 core servers with uh, maybe 48 core servers. So right now the hardware is, I mean, the, the, the prices come down uh, every day. Uh, so if you go with the 48 core server, uh, what is the cost effective, uh, cost effectiveness we are getting? Are we saving uh, uh, the price and the, uh, the initial procurement time? And also obviously once you have uh, less number of servers, uh, it's going to be less hosting cost also. Less space in the data center and less power um, during the maintenance. So it's going to have initial procurement uh, uh, and also the maintenance effect, depending on what you choose the size of uh, the servers. So we went with uh, uh, 48 core servers and 256 gig RAM uh, servers and have multiple solar instances and maximize uh, the resource usage. Um, and so the, for example, 48 core servers, we went with running uh, 24 uh, solar instances, assigning uh, two cores for each uh, solar instance, and then multiple servers uh, serving the same copy we have three copies of uh, the solar uh, running across uh, servers. So one issue with uh, the large commodity servers uh, is, uh, of course, when if the server goes down for any reason, then you have multiple shards running on that server, or they all uh, become unavailable. So we have to make sure that um, uh, we are distributing the shards uh, properly across servers um, and evenly. So just to summarize, uh, some, uh, again, this is more of our uh, uh, design decisions. We went with the shard architecture of uh, the solar cluster using the uh, multiple shards, and then we um, uh, have divided the shards into uh, aggregator nodes, and uh, there's no standard, any term called aggregator node. We are just differentiating uh, some nodes into, say, called aggregator nodes, some called the data nodes, but all of them are uh, same solar instances, but some with uh, higher heap size allocated, some with uh, less heap size allocated. And then we use uh, Hadoop for uh, data indexing and uh, data feeds uh, uh, on the site. And the large commodity servers uh, with uh, 48 core CPUs, uh, 256 gig RAM, uh, solid state drives, InfiniBand. So that's about how we done. And we're continuously um, enhancing uh, the, the cloud features. Um, so we are, we are continuously adding. And come see me if you are interested. And if you need more information, uh, this is my email. Thank you very much. Thank you.